Hey, what's going on? This is Josh here coming to you for live from North Dakota. It is a nice sunny evening, uh, right around 70 degrees today. So it's doing pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty uh, fortunate that we have some nice weather here. So uh, I am going to make this quick today. And, you know, let me ask you something here. Do you ever feel like you're not in sync with your team? Do you ever feel like you just kind of are disconnected and you don't really don't really know what they're up to and you you feel like you're you're not really meshing well and you just you don't really know how to how to keep things rolling. Well, today we're going to talk about a few tips on how you can actually be more in sync with your team and just some mindset around, you know, what it means to be in sync with your team and what are some of the things that you can look for in yourself and how you can be more of a um, relatable and authentic leader for your the people that you're trying to bring through this journey called life. So uh, my name is Josh. I uh, am in network marketing. My wife and I, uh, we've been in multiple different network marketing companies and we help other network marketers and business owners uh, just learn how to take their business online and also how to, you know, build a better business and a bigger business. So um, one of the things that, you know, for today, and I'm going to kind of make this quick because I do have some family here, but I wanted to get this out because I did talk about this here on Sunday that we are going to have something awesome today. And I, I do really believe that this is something really cool. Uh, I had a conversation with the, uh, my mentor about this because I felt like this was a good topic and we, we kind of did some brainstorming and, and figured out what we could talk about and what are some of the good tips that they use. I mean, they've been in the industry for 15 years, so figured why not, right? So um, the biggest thing that I, I, I want to talk about right away, and we talk about being in sync with the team, we talk about, you know, being relatable and being authentic. And, you know, one of the, the big things that really comes into mind is unity. And I do want to just quickly read off the definition of unity, because I think it is really cool. Uh, you know, the way that it's set up is unity is the state of being united in a way in a, in a unified way to face adversities, the opposite of division. So you think about that and you think about unity and you think about people coming together. And what does that really say about a team? You know, if you have unity within a team, how are you actually going to attack challenges? Are you going to give people individual things to do and you're going to kind of be solo mio and, you know, I'm going to go through and do this all myself? Or are you going to band together and you're going to be a true, a, a true group of people that can overcome anything together. And so when I hear unity and I, I look at that definition and I, I really think about that, the biggest thing that I really enjoy about reading that definition is that it really explains that it's, it's all about going through and being unified together to really overcome any opposition to really overcome any challenge, to overcome any struggle or anything like that. But the real difficulty that I find is how do you really build that unity with your team? How do you go through and, you know, really dig deep in that and understand how you can drive that togetherness for your team? Because especially in network marketing, that's what we're doing. We're building a team, we're building a tribe, we're building, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to say other words that could be taken the wrong way, but you're building a community of people who are all on the same path looking for the same goal, right? So think about that when we, when we talk about this, like some questions you can ask yourself, right? So a big question is, how's your relationship with your spouse, your mentors, and your team? You know, how, how, what are your relationships like, right? What are the things that you... Are, are building in terms of your relationship. So like, let's talk about the relationship with your spouse, for example. And, and I know this is getting into like the personal realm and not a lot of people like to go there, but really think about that. When you're around your team, how is your relationship with your spouse? Are you honest with each other? Are you understanding each other? You know, when you have a conversation, are you bickering all the time? Do you, do your conversations generally turn into p finger pointing and, and, you know, blaming each other or, you know, I was right, you were wrong type stuff? Or do you have adult mature conversations, you know, and take that also to your mentor? You know, what kind of conversations do you have with your mentor? 
do you have conversations where you brainstorm stuff and you think about stuff and then you put an action plan together and then you turn around and say, hey, you know, we've we've got this plan, let's go ahead and execute it. Or is it this constant battle where you just this, this infighting between you and your mentor where you can't get through to anything? You, you're instead of like this, you're like this, right? So you think about that and what kind of relationship are you have there? And you take those two relationships, you know, and, and some people, maybe you can look at the relationship with your kids, right? What is it that you're doing with your kids and how do you treat them as well, especially in front of your team? Because let's be honest, you're going to have those moments where you're going to be showing your outside life, your outside of business life, your personal life to people who are in your business. It's just inevitable. It's going to happen, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's, you know, or some other social media, whether it's out and about, you know, we've got people on our team that are local. I could see them at a store anytime, any day. So am I going to act differently when I'm out and about than when I'm around other people like my mentor? No, you should never do that. So think about those relationships and then transfer that into your team. Like, what are you actually showing to your team, right? And so that's, that's one thing to think about. Another thing is, what is the goal for your team? Do you guys have a common goal? Do you guys have something that uh, uh, that you're working towards together? Yes, everybody has their goals. Everybody has the things they want to do. Everybody has the the systematic thought process of I want to achieve this, you know, X, Y, and Z to be able to really live a full life. But I'm not talking about someone's goals. Like I'm not talking about having a team goal to go to Tahiti or having a team goal to you know, hit a specific pin level or something like that. But maybe there's a team goal to, um, you know, maybe like, let's say for example, there's a team goal for helping some, like helping a mom come home from her day job. Or maybe there's a team goal of getting that guy out of having to work three jobs and getting down to maybe working one job or no jobs. You know, what, what kind of goal are you setting for your team and how are you setting that goal? You know, think about that. And the other thing, to, the other question I have too is, you know, what is it that you're actually doing to unify your team? Are you going to events? Are you going to, uh, you know, team meetings together? Are you doing any sort of morale type stuff? And yes, I know there's people in the corporate world. They're like, oh, morale events. Oh, here we go. The corporate world's coming out of them. And yes, I've been in the corporate world for quite some time and still am for right now. But Think about this. You got to do stuff that brings people together, that brings that sense of community, that camaraderie, you know, that fellowship. So if you're going to do that, how are you doing that? Your team meetings aren't enough, right? So think, you know, ask yourself those questions. And then after you ask yourselves, you know, those questions, then let's go into these tips and how you can unify your team, right? So think about that. And then think about this, like, Number one is, and you're going to hear me say this a lot, but partner with a mentor. Don't sit back and just say, I got this. I got this. I'm good. I'm good. I got this. I'm yeah, whatever. Or some people go, mm, yeah, I got this, you know, whatever. Actually partner with a mentor and see how they did it. Look at how they decided to do their things. You know, how did they build their team? How did they bring up morale? How did they, you know, uh, build that belief in people and then partner with them and ask them how they can teach you how to be like that. Because the thing is, is that you can, you, you can try to learn yourself. You can go on Google and you can search all this stuff. How do I make my team like me? How do I make my team unified? But you're really not going to know how to do it in the real sense and in the, in the real world, unless you go to somebody who's already done it, especially if you, and maybe the mentor is not somebody in your business. Maybe it's somebody in a different business. Maybe it's somebody in a different industry. Maybe it's a friend that, you know, has run a team or something like that, but go to somebody who has the experience and ask them to look at this and say, how can I make this better? Be a little vulnerable, understand your challenges and move forward with that, you know? And, and, you know, I'm curious too, let me know uh, down below. Let me know if you have a mentor and if you would go to your mentor for that. You know, um, let me know if you if, if you have somebody that you trust with that kind of information, because that's really important. 
And if you don't, you know, maybe, maybe you have an idea of who you could talk to, but so number one, obviously partner with a mentor. Number two is don't be a yes man. Unifying your team does not mean that you have to go around and, and just say yes to everything. You don't have to go through and they say, hey, here's a great idea for an event. You go, yeah, great idea. If you don't like it as a leader, you're not truly going to do anything to build those relationships because you're only doing it because somebody on your team suggested it. Don't be that person. Actually speak up and be authentic. And if there's something that you don't like and that maybe somebody suggested something, obviously don't just say, nope, that's dumb. That's a dumb idea. Turn around and just say, Hey, you know what? Maybe that's not the greatest idea, but maybe we could brainstorm together. Like you've got great ideas. Let's work with that together. Right? Let's, let's actually build this together and then let's do something that the whole team can agree on, or at least the, the leaders on the team can agree on. And let's get some input from some other people. Imagine how unifying that's going to be for people on your team when they turn around and go, man, you know, our leader is awesome. He, we came up with an idea and, you know, he didn't like it, but he didn't really shoot it down. We sat down, we all got together. We, we put together a panel and we, we, we really fleshed it out. And then look at what we got. We got this great event. We did this thing. We had some good food. We had some training. We had some fun. Think of how unifying that's going to be versus just saying, you know what? No, that's not going to work. I'll figure something out. And I'll let you know. So, you know, and, and, and let me know down below, have you ever experienced that where you've brought up an idea and someone turned around and said, no, that's a bad idea. And then later on, they came up with something similar and then said, this was the greatest idea ever. And I came up with it. I know I have, and it's okay. It happens. But think of, think of how different it would have been if they would have taken your idea and just helped you tweak it. How, mu how much more unified would you have felt with your leader at that point, right? So, and the last thing too is let's, you know, when you're talking, looking at like tips, how you can unify your team is actually include them in more than just what they've talked about. Actually include them in your goal planning for your team. Include them in the plans for when you're go gonna go to an event. You know, maybe you've got a big business conference coming up and instead of just sending out a message and say, Hey, everybody, here's the plans, you know, you're riding with him and you're doing this and you're rooming with these guys actually include them in some of the, the decision-making process for the team and be, be authentic in how you're doing it. Don't just turn around and say, Hey, you know, uh, give me some ideas and I'll, and I'll put it together. You know, just like we talked about not being yes, men and, you know, and I know I kind of bled those two together, but, um, you know, actually be intentional in including these people in the decision-making process, in the goal setting, you know, figure out what people really want to work towards. You know, maybe, maybe your team really wants to help you get to your next rank advance and they know that you're close and they really are passionate about your leadership skills. If you don't ask them, you're never going to know. And so if you open up that table and you say, hey guys, you know, we're here, we're doing this training and let's figure out what we can do for the next big team goal. What can we work for? You'll surprise yourself at how fast people will come up with ideas that are not about them. They're gonna come up with ideas that are not at all about what they want. It's gonna be about what the team wants. And as the more people do that, the more people that turn around and they, they feel unified as a team because of the fact that they have the ability to really dig in and, and feel that camaraderie and feel that community and feel all that there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And, and I do, I do want to kind of talk a little bit and I'm not going to go too far into this, but part of the reason why this came up is because I've been hearing this a lot and I actually had a conversation with a gentleman the other day that the main reason why he's contemplating, you know, really not being part of the company he's with anymore is because he doesn't feel unified on his team. You know, they, they've got people that are doing so many different things on his team and he just doesn't understand what's going on. And I asked him if I could, you know, get some tips from him and, you know, what would he want as far as being part of a unified team? And I took that information to my mentor and I said, Hey, I have a really good idea for some content. Can you help me put this together? And he said, yeah, you know, let's, let's work through it and let's check it out. 
And I was really impressed because this gentleman after the fact, and I hope that he's either, you know, watching this now or that he's going to watch it later, but he really made a good point that when he doesn't feel unified on his team, he doesn't really feel like he can accomplish his goals. He feels like he's just doing whatever his leader needs him to do so that way his leader can make some money. And I was, I was pretty appalled by that because I don't feel that a leader should ever tell people what to do. I think a leader should include people and lead them to the right destination. So uh, anyways, that's, that's it for me. Um, just a quick recap, you know, uh, when you're thinking about if you're unified with your team, you know, think about your relationships, think about the goals you have for your team and think about what you normally do to unify your team. And then as far as tips go on how to unify your team, uh, number one, partner with a mentor. Number two, don't be a yes man or a yes woman. You know, don't say yes to everything that happens. Actually, you know, be constructive and, and you know, do, do what's right for everybody. And then number three, just include them. You know, be be the leader that they want and be part of their journey. Be part of their their lifestyle and be part of what they want you to be. So that's it for me tonight. I do appreciate you coming by. If you did get value uh, from this, I'd totally love to hear about it down below. Uh, if you have any comments or anything, definitely let me know. I'd love to get to those. And uh, yeah, for anybody that's that's been able to watch, you know, if you come on this later, feel, th feel free to throw a hashtag replay in there and I'll come back and comment with you. So uh, my name is Josh again, and I will talk to you later. Have a good night.